and welcome to the Lockdown Learning Podcast, a series dedicated to helping all parents who suddenly find themselves educating their children at home as we make our way through this challenging time. I'm your host, Kate Coleman, the mother of three boys and a staff member at a self-directed school in the UK called East Kent Sudley School. And I'm your other host, Mark Gallivan. I'm a dad and also a staff member at a Sudbury school in Colorado, USA called Alpine Valley School. Today's episode of the show focuses on the teacher's perspective on home education. A lot of parents seem to feel that they might be better prepared to take on the role as home educators if they were teachers themselves. It's a daunting challenge to suddenly take on the burden of schooling all your children overnight. And we wanted to speak with some trained teachers who shifted their focus to home education prior to the global lockdown. We wanted to find out what they know as trained teachers that we might not. Our guests today are Heidi Steele, who is a primary school teacher, that's elementary school teacher for my fellow Americans, for several years before making the decision to home educate her own children. And Joe Atkinson, who trained as a teacher but left after three years and now tutors children who are struggling with school or whose parents have decided to make the move to home education. Joe and Heidi both have such an obvious passion for helping young people. It's really inspiring to hear. And it's always nice to hear from someone with a wealth of experience about the real differences between educating at home and in a classroom environment. I had a lot of fun with this interview. Joe and Heidi are great guests, and I really hope you enjoy it as well. Here are Joe and Heidi. Hi, my name is Heidi, and I am a qualified teacher. Um, but I am also a home educator and specifically we choose to unschool our children. So we've been doing that for nine years and I now have four children who are all at home um, and all sort of just living and learning and playing and happy as we go. And uh, we're really enjoying our journey. Hello, everyone. I'm Joe. I am uh, also a qualified teacher and a play therapist, uh, non-practicing, and I've been working for the last 10 years uh, directly with families, homeschooling, with families after school, doing tuition, and I've been work- working at EKSS, East Kent Sudbury School, for the past year and a half, uh, one day a week. I was... Um, I quite, I, yeah, I was originally training as an addiction psychologist, uh, and I went away to Cambodia and did a couple of months teaching in a school in the summer. And that was when I decided I wanted to be a teacher. I, the reason I liked it, I think is because the the community aspect of, of the teaching experience there, how the teachers are really involved in the, in the life of, of, of the children and helping them out to little things like uh, tooth by sorting them out with toothbrushes and making sure they wash their hands. And it was a, it was a real uh, community experience. And then when I, so when I came back to England, I started, I decided I want to train as a teacher and I found that the the experience completely different. Uh, It was too formal for me here and there was far too much testing. uh, And it, there was just, there was just not time to be with the kids, even in the early years where the whole selling point of EYFS is you're going to have time to, you know, it's play. So there, was, there, was, there wasn't that much time to do that. So I decided to take up to train as a play therapist. As I did that, I started to get started tutoring. And that was when this homeschooling world opened up to me and I started to meet more families and find out about all this different types of education, alternative education, and experience what was going on for people at home for education, as well as in the school. I'd been doing some uh, work experience, so I was probably about 16, I guess, maybe even 15 at the time. So my work experience was in a school. Um, But I had this moment where I was actually um, with the children. And um, I was sat around the table with these kids and they were doing some maths work and there was a a child next to me who was sort of struggling a bit with what we were doing. And I just sat there and and I can't particularly remember what I did or how we did it. But I know that at the end of it, 
he had this moment where he understood the concept that was trying to be taught. But it was that that moment of being with those children in the in the class and just um, helping them. And then I obviously trained to be a teacher and went on in my teaching career. And it wasn't really until I started having my own children that um, I started uh, looking at the education system. I really became increasingly sort of disillusioned with the education system and knew that there were lots of things happening in schools that I wasn't particularly um, happy with or on board with. And also, um, by the time my eldest um, came to the point where we would apply for schools, I actually had three children um, at home. And I actually really enjoyed being at home with them. And I loved um, them being there. Um, And I knew my children really well. And I knew that my eldest and my second child, who was only 20 months um, younger, would really actually both struggle going to school at the age of four. So we took the decision um, to um, not send them and to see how things went, um, sort of take a day at a time, um, knowing that school was always there if um, we chose it to be. But at that moment in time, it really wasn't um, for us. So what actually happens in our house on a day to day basis doesn't really look like school at all. So we have an approach to home education um, that is known as unschooling. So my children um, have never been to school. So from right when my children were small, we've always done things together. So we've always played together and we've always met friends together and we've always been out to different um, places of interest together. And what happened for us is we just sort of naturally fell into unschooling because we just carried on doing those things. Um, I realised that my children... Um, had sort of learned so much in their preschool years um, from us just following this approach of being together and, and playing together. And I didn't really see any reason why they wouldn't continue to do that if we had carried on doing the same. And we enjoyed being together and it was something that was working for us. So now almost 10 years later, we're sort of still following the same idea. My older two, who are 11 and 12, have taught me recently how to play Dungeons and Dragons, which is no mean feat. And we really enjoy doing that together. And there's lots of board games. We do lots of arts and crafts together. And we watch films together and we bake together. Um, But there's also a lot of online gaming that happens. Um, And it just is really part of the natural flow of our life that we've continued doing from when we started um, years ago. Yeah, so I kind of operate in that space where in between uh, the pressures of school or school goals and uh, home and what the the parents' or the family's goals are for the children. So a lot of the time uh, I, you'll, I'll find that the, that the child has a lot of pressure or has experienced a lot of things that, that they need to be done or they're working towards because someone would have called me up and asked me to come in and help. So there'll be some kind of goals that they'll be wanting to achieve. So what I try and do is the good thing about working one-to-one is you can have a very very intense uh, relational experience with the child. And I really try and attune to to their needs and just really just be with them and see what see what they're experiencing and try and reflect that back to them and try and help them understand and try and uh, help them deal and cope with what's happening, whether it's some families will be quite focused on traditional school work. So I'll, uh, I'll try and help, help the child understand that it's a bit of a game and what, we're, what they're doing and that, and that they're kind of playing this game of school and that they've got their, they're in it, but it doesn't, it doesn't, uh, what's the word? It doesn't affect them too much to, the, to, uh, to their core, to their self. A lot of the time, it kids will just get in a cycle of being having a test and getting a result and getting and being judged and judged and judged and judged so i try and strip all that stuff out and just try and be with them and see them for who they are when i do that when i think i do that successfully things just tend to relax a bit for them and ease up and they just find it that little bit easier to deal with what's being thrown at them 
uh, and that they have that little bit more space to explore and to explore and to find out what everything is all about and what they're really interested in, what they can, what they can get out of what's happening. So freedom is a big thing as well. Has a uh, has my experience of a teacher helped me as a home educator? Uh, yes and no, really. I mean, yes, because I've uh, being a teacher, you meet, you get to meet thirty new kids every year. You get to meet the families. You get to spend. You get to see a whole load of issues, and uh, you get experience of 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 lots of different children, which is something you don't have when you're working one to one. You just you just see one at a time, but. You really, you, I really see school as as a bit as a game that's that's being played, and all the things that teachers, a lot of the things that teachers are taught, the the strategies to help. You hear some of them scaffolding to learn and and uh, activities, but they all have an agenda, and that's very different to my own agenda from when I'm working with kids. So I've had to. Uh, strip all of those away and work out what's really, really important for me in terms of helping children and what I see is really important for, for the, for the child themselves. Being a qualified teacher, I think primarily gave me the confidence to make that first step into home educating. So my, my, uh, qualification and my experience and the, the study I've done in, in subjects, for example, like cognitive development and child development, they really um, gave me this footing to stand on and say that I was confident in our decision and that I um, knew what we were doing. Um, but there were equally, in fact, probably more than equally, lots of things that I had to unlearn about what that would look like. So um, I spent a lot of time purposely not comparing our day to a school day, for example, um, not thinking about what would this look like if I was in school right now. So at nine o'clock in the morning, are my children sat down at a desk doing some uh, literacy work or numeracy work and really trying to walk away from knowing what their school peers would be doing and constantly drawing my attention away from that, really trying to unlearn those things and trusting my children instead and trusting the things that they were doing and the processes that they were going through, even when I knew that it looked vastly different from what was actually going on um, in school. So I think I've yeah, I've definitely had to unlearn um, a lot of school-like thinking and a lot of school-like behaviours and really pick those apart and say what things are really, or what things in school were really necessary um, that we need in our home life and actually what things were happening in school that we don't, that we don't need and to be confident in our own path and our own learning journey. I write um, a lot about play and how important um, play is. Um, I really think that it is the, the basis for um, all learning. Uh, right from when we're born, we're like little scientists exploring the world and, and trying things out and researching stuff and evaluating stuff. Um, and, it, and it's really all it's all play, you know, children just do it naturally. They're just, they're just born to do it. And then they take all this information from the world around them that they acquire through their investigation and their senses and, and the things they're doing. And, and then they make all these connections and they, and they learn from it. And I just don't think that this changes um, as children grow up if we give children the opportunity to continue that exploration and continue that play and and to join them and, and play with them in the things that they're doing um it sort of evolves into things that we might consider to be less play like so it might uh, we might start to use terms like self-directed learners um but actually the foundation is all play-based activity um they take 
what are the hallmarks of play and naturally apply them into everyday things that for us might begin to look more like learning activities or or even look a little bit more like work so for example my 12 year old has recently begun um, learning British Sign Language which to um, people um, on the periphery of our lives um, looks like he's doing something highly academic and learning and he's he's signed up for a course and he works at it um, for you know days on end or he's got material that he's printed off and and he'll um, practice with us um, when when he can. Um, and so it looks like academic learning, but actually for him, it's just a progression of this idea of, of play. He's just trying out something new um, and he's enjoying it and he picks it up when he wants to have a go and he sticks with a certain bit until he's mastered it and then he'll go on and learn um, a new bit. So I just, I think um, for me, play really is a, just this continuation or continues even um, all the way through our childhood. And for me, the hope is that when they get to um, adulthood, that whatever they find themselves doing is actually something that they enjoy and that is sort of a continuation of that idea of play, that it's it's something that they actually find um, enjoyable. I I agree with uh, everything Heidi has said as well. I mean, the, it really is the play. Really, is the basis for of all learning. I think even in adulthood as well, you can you can see uh, it. I, what I would like to add is that I think behind it, one of the mo- most important things is it, it gives children, it gives us, and especially children, safety. And it's a space where uh, they can be heard, seen, accepted and uh and enjoyed either on their own or with others there's so much happening uh in play that there's there's just so much going on when 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 words aren't there when it when when we're not children when we can't articulate things things are pre-verbal or we can't find the words children will find can find this in play they can they can explore this in play which they just can't do in in words in language um you can represent uh, your own reality without fear of uh, any consequences so you can really start to master the world around you uh and uh, and work out what's happening and it's i think it's really important that you always have you can you, you can access play even if you maybe see feel like you're doing something that's not very playful it's it's really important that it's there that you can just pick up whenever you need to, to, to get that safety, to get that, uh, the stuff going on in the brain, the brain chemistry, uh, settled. And, and so you, you, you're ready for the world ready for what's around you are ready for what's next. So, uh, advice for parents, in my experience, children are more prepared to to deal with uh, these kind of what's happening now then then we give them credit for i think as long as we create the right environment for them so my advice really would be to start with yourself uh as a parent what's going on for you uh, in these moments what what emotions is this bringing up in you are there any is there any fear of being judged by the school or fear of not doing the homework is that your stuff is there any anger or set so start with yourself and see what's happening for you and really do that with um you know love and compassion to try and find out what's 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 going on on for yourself because you don't your the the child your child or the children they're going to be uh you're going to be their only person in their life at the moment for the whole day so they're going to be using you to regulate to to calm themselves down so so you want to make sure that you're you're in uh, the best possible place yourself so the the most useful thing you can do is look after yourself and that would start with what do you need to to get through the day for yourself do, do you need to how are you going to look after what kind of self-care do you need so that when you're with your children you can you can attune to them as best you can you can you can be with them you know 100 and focused and i would like i'll add that for the children don't worry too much about 
what they do academically for these few months. Just let them follow what they want to do and see where it goes, see where it leads, because it will lead somewhere. So I love the way you talk about attuning to our children, and I think that's um, something that we need to be focusing on at the moment and not listening maybe to the outside pressures that maybe school is putting on us or as Joe just mentioned, you know, our own fears and our own worries about um, what our children are doing. So really attuning um, to your children and listening to them when they're um, trying to express things or tell us things about um, particularly in relation to their to their schoolwork. Um, I think really parents know their children um, better than anyone and we should really use that to our advantage it's actually worth um way more than uh teaching qualifications are worth you know so if our children are in any way expressing that they um can't engage with something or they won't engage with schoolwork at the moment then i would really um encourage everyone to sort of put that aside and just do things together um that you love you know we spend our days doing the things together that we love um, doing so at the moment um, I can give you some examples of of what we're doing um, which are sort of stress-free for us and and pressure-free um, just because they are um, things that we enjoy together so we've um, had like picnics in the garden uh, we've set up extra Minecraft accounts so that we can all play Minecraft together uh, we've had slumber parties and we've done sort of set up cinema in the house so we've had made tickets and popcorn um together i've set up quite a lot of virtual play dates with people if that's something you're um you have the technology to do and uh, we've done a couple of online um classes art classes and things as i mentioned before um my my daughter is very arty so we've sort of continued along that theme um we've made slime we're out in the garden planting seeds we're riding our bikes. Um, it really has been for us about focusing on on, on what the children um, like doing. So finding the games that they like to play and the things that they want to do, and all the knowledge and the and the skills and the learning really happen as a sort of a byproduct of of all that stuff of being in a, a safe environment and a, and a place where they're um, happy and joyful and feel secure. That does it for this episode of the Lockdown Learning Podcast. We would love to hear your feedback as well as any other suggestions you have for future episodes. You can contact the show via email at lockdownlearningpodcast at gmail.com. We've mentioned it before on the show, but Kate and I are both advocates for self-directed learning. And it is our hope that in addition to providing helpful resources and reassuring voices on this show, we also encourage parents to explore what it might feel like to look at education in a different way, one that focuses more on what children want to explore than what experts say they ought to be doing. To that end, our next episode is all about de-schooling and learning to let go of our preconceived notions about what constitutes a school anyway and seeing what those ideas might look like in the real world. Look for that episode coming soon. In the meantime, if you'd like to find out more about all of that self-directed learning stuff, you can find a wealth of information on our school's websites. East Kent Sudbury School is online at eksss.org.uk and Alpine Valley School is online at alpinevalleyschool.com. Thanks for listening. I'm Mark. And I'm Kate. You've been listening to the Lockdown Learning Podcast. Until next time, remember to take a deep breath, hug your kids, and pat yourself on the back, because we know you absolutely deserve it. Be well. Be well.